So why in the heck do I always use a tripod? Well, that's a good question. We're going to answer that today. Hi, I'm Joel Grimes. This is another behind the lens video blog, which is uh, kind of a fun thing to do because um, I don't like typing and uh, you know writing, and so I do have a blog on my, uh, well, I guess you'd call it my JoelGrimesWorkshops.com, a little section that says blog, and I have lots of articles in there, and I've been writing those for uh, a number of years, but to do it visually it makes it a lot easier for me. All right, so the question is, why do I always have my camera on a tripod? So if you watch my behind the scenes stuff, you'll always say, Hey, why are you always on a tripod? I get that question, that email all the time. Well, here's why. Um, if you go back, see, I'm from the old school days, and um, I'm not saying I'm old, but I kind of sometimes feel like it. But when I started out, 1978, I was in junior college, first year out of high school. Um, my professor, Lou Bernal, said, he told us to the class, he said, you can take the most expensive lens, camera lens combo, whatever, that you can buy. You put it and shoot that wide open, so it, whatever it's at, you know, 1.4 or 2.8, whatever, shoot it wide open, handheld at say 1 60th of a second or 1 1 25th of a second, and then you go and take a kit lens, cheapo, you know, combo, um, and shoot it at f8, or thereabouts, put on a tripod, get that tripod, maybe have a sandbag on it, get it really solid. You take both those uh, images and compare them, and the chances are that the uh, camera combo with the cheap lens is going to produce a better, sharper picture. That's the way the, uh, optics work and the way it is in the real world. The reason is because the single greatest degradation of Sharpness comes from vibration. So I get people t coming to me all the time. They say, hey, um, I have the same camera, the same lens you have, but my images suck. What's the problem? I say, well, show me how you're doing it. And so when they do show me how I'm doing it, uh, or they show how they're taking pictures, I go, there's your problem. Number one, most of them are shooting wide open. Um, and they're you know, not really worried so much about what shutter speed they're on. So sometimes the shutter speed gets down. And I would say this. If you're in a studio situation, your sync speed is on my, most of my cameras are around 200 to the second. So if you think about this, yeah, this flash is going off and, you know, and that helps to, sometimes, you know, the flash duration helps freeze action or freeze the, the image. But the chances are, even at 200 to the second handheld, you're going to get some degradation, some vibration creeping into the overall image. So in a studio situation, even when it's controlled like that, I always shoot in a on a tripod. Of course, we know that outdoors, when I'm at a second or whatever, you're always going to be at a tripod. But what people don't understand is that you sometimes um, it's important to actually invest in a good solid tripod, not a cheapo. And there's a lot of cheapos on the market. Now, I have a really right stuff tripod sitting here, um, and this is a pretty pricey. Uh, you know, tripod, but, um, and you don't have to run out and get one of these. I would say that, and I tell anyone that when it comes to a product, you buy what you can afford. That's number one. Um, also, you, I can tell you this, that a tripod, if you treat it right, will last you a lifetime. I've got a tripod over here. It's a Gitzo that is probably, I think that tripod is about 25 years old. Um, what does that tell you? I'm old. I've been around a long time. But a good tripod, unless you lose it or back over in, in your car, should last you a lifetime. So it's a good investment. I also uh, happen to be a fan of the Really Right Stuff um, products because um, I bought their ball head and L bracket and uh, their slider their, their slider rail for my, my stitching of doing panos uh, probably 12 years ago. And I was stitching my images before there was a program to put them together. That's how long I've been doing this. Um, because it was only on the PC, I had a Mac, and at that time uh, they didn't have a program to do it. So I was doing it by hand. But I did understand the, con the concept of getting my nodal uh, point and all that to get those um, images to line up you know, fairly good. So um, the other thing to think about too is when you have an L bracket, like the really right stuff, and there's a couple of companies out there that make them, but 
you end up always keeping your camera over the center of the weight or the, the balance of your tripod. So if you have the old school way of you take, if you want to go vertical or horizontal, you have to go and move the tripod over to the side, um, say something like this, over to the side. Now all the weight of your tripod or your camera is out over here. So think about it. Is that going to be more stable than up here? No. It's going to have more of a, a chance of, you know, having um, some vibration than if you're over the center. The longer the lens, obviously, the more vibration you're going to have uh, or the risk of vibration. And so you have hopefully a center column on your uh, long lenses that you put and keep it as centered as possible. There is on a lot of tripods and the really right stuff has the ability to hook a sandbag or your camera bag if you're, if you're out hiking and you don't have a sand uh, bag with you, which I usually keep one in the car, you can keep that tripod a little bit more stable. So those things help minimize vibration, and I try to keep my lens at around f7.1, f8, which is the sweet spot of the lens. And when I used to submit work to stock agencies, um, I always would get a call from an editor saying, what lenses are you using because your images are sharper than any other photographers that are submitting work to us. And I would say it's not the lens, though a good lens is, is nice, important. It's the uh, how I treat my camera, which is minimizing vibration and shooting at a sweet spot of the lens. So um, I would encourage you to go and check out the Really Right Stuff um, website. They have I mean, we're talking all sorts of little goodies that you can use in terms of if you're doing macro photography or mounting your, your flash uh, uh, off your camera. Uh, they got different size ball heads. This is a, the middle one, which I think is the uh, 40. Um, there's a 50, and there's one a little smaller. So this is a good one for most of the cameras that are out today. I do have a bigger one, and um, now that I'm shooting the Pentax 645Z, um, I might actually pull that, that uh, ball head back out and use it, but uh, check out their website. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, call them because they are really a great company with really friendly people and they are there to help you. So don't forget to go check out my actual blog, which is jewelgrimesworkshops.com. I have a bunch of workshops every year um, and you can always look at the schedule there. Um, I also have articles that I've written, um, images that I talk about how I did and all that kind of stuff, and some videos that I uh, have put together on my whole process from start to finish. Uh, what else? My Facebook is Joel Grimes Photography, and I think that's about it. I'm going to put all my social media stuff at the end here so you can get and find out where I'm at.